My name is John Bauman. I'm a clockmaker here in Burlington. I've uh, been in this particular location for just about 20 years now. I've taken this location over from previous people that were clockmakers and watchmakers here. So yeah, there's been a clockmaker on this corner and watchmaker for quite a number of years. I'm basically just carrying on the tradition down here in Burlington. And it's a good place to actually have a business like this because um, we draw from just about the entire GTA now. Um, you can well imagine that as time goes on, more and more of us are retiring and stepping out of it. I'm probably one of the last ones left. So that means people are coming from much farther away. We do a lot of different restorations. Uh, it's not uncommon for us to be working on stuff that's two and three hundred years old. And that's mostly where the big challenge always is, uh, to take something that's been around for so long and has been repaired so many times that, uh, and of course there's all those years of wear that go into, those, into the pieces. We've got to bring them back to functioning form and once we're finished with them, we're actually trying to get them preserved so that they're actually good for the next generation. The art of clock making, well, that's a bit of a trade that's, and, and craft that's dying in this particular country. There are no schools left that actually offer it anymore. We actually will have to uh, learn it as a distance learning now because there's, there's no one offering the courses anymore here in North America. So I have a student right now, for example, that is through the British Horological Institute and, and he's trying to learn the craft of clock making. Um, he can still go quite far with that if he likes to because there's always going to be a need for a good clock maker because there are literally three or four, 300 and plus years of clocks out there that still need to be repaired and restored. Start learning as much as you possibly can from the older generation because they're the ones that when they're gone, you won't get that information from them anymore. And it's invaluable. Had I been able to listen to some of the clockmakers that I knew when I was 18, I would have learned some skills that are basically now extinct. In the past, of course, everything was done by hand. Um, and as my teacher had said to me, you know, those, those men have, and, and women that actually built watches, because quite frankly, there were a lot of women that were involved in the watchmaking trade 100 and some odd years ago. They've, they've lo we've lost so much information that they, and skill, hand skill that they had. If you really want to know, you, you've got to keep learning. So, and there's always something that's going to come through your door that you haven't seen before. So it's always, a lot of reading, a lot of asking, um, and that's really that's where the challenge comes from. Obviously, as a store like this with a retail location, we do more than just repair clocks. We also sell antique clocks, and then with that also becomes the fact that we also repair watches, both new ones and old ones, and now uh, something that's relatively new for us, but has been a passion of mine for a long time, fountain pens. It's now the craze that everybody likes to have a really good fountain pen again. I sort of grew up with them, so I've started getting into the sales of fountain pens with a bit of a knowledge on them and as well as the basic repairs of fountain pens as well. And yeah, it's an old fashioned looking store. It's exactly what this place needs to be. It, it, I don't want to look like a mall store. I want, I want this place to look like some place that you would have walked into, into a shop like Dickens days, right? Yeah. Love.